starring Virginia Widler and Jane Darwell in Junior Angel on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. One of DuPont's many better things for better living is Speed Easy Wall Finish, the fast, easy, economical wall paint that is saving homeowners time and money. Speed Easy saves time because it covers wallpaper quickly and easily in one coat and dries in an hour. It saves money. The average room costs less than $3. Speed Easy comes in eight cheerful pastel colors. When you redecorate this spring, try DuPont Speed Easy. The nurse on the battlefront is the angel of mercy, and we all know and respect her worth. What some of us don't realize, perhaps, is that today in America there is a junior angel, the teenage girl, the student aide, who has volunteered to work in our home front hospitals and help take the load off the overworked hospital nurses. Tonight in an original play written specially for the DuPont Cavalcade by Peter Lyon, we present the story of such a junior angel with Virginia Widler starred in the role of Ruthie Crawford and Jane Darwell as Nurse Boyle. We believe that our story tonight is the story also of thousands of American girls who are waiting only to be told how they can help. Later on in the program, Miss Widler will interview Miss Margaret Collette, one of the girls actually engaged in the helpful work our play is concerned with tonight. DuPont presents Virginia Widler and Jane Darwell in Junior Angel on the Cavalcade of America. We're going to spend some time tonight in a pleasant residential suburb of a Midwestern American city. Here on a pleasant, tree-shaded street of this suburb is a comfortable home where live a Mr. Crawford and a Mrs. Crawford and their daughter Ruth, who is 14 years old, going on 15. If we walk across the front lawn and peep into the living room, we can see Ruth and her mother talking importantly about important things. That is, actually important to Ruth. But, Mother, you said it. You actually did. If I could get Daddy to give you his shoe stamp... Well, you'd let me use mine to get high heels with. And the dance is this Saturday. Oh, Ruth. Mother, you forgot. I'm sorry, dear. I expect I did. I've been so busy holding Mrs. Johnson's hand now that everything is happening to her. Oh. Are her eyes getting worse? Well, they're no better. But what's on her mind now is her Billy leaving for the Army early tomorrow morning. What? Billy's leaving? Yes, didn't you know? They cut his furlough short. He's got to report right away. They think it means overseas duty. You never told me. Why don't you run along over next door and say goodbye? He'd like that. Billy. But don't stay too long, Ruth. Dinner will be ready in less than an hour. Hi, Ruthie. Hello, Billy. I I just heard you were leaving. Yep. Kept it quiet, didn't you? Didn't want to worry your mother. Yeah, that's right. Hey, Ruthie, throw me those brown socks on the bed there, will you? Here. All right, thanks. I think that was swell of you, Billy. Not to let on you had to leave, I mean. Billy. Yeah? Uh, what are you doing? I mean, tonight... Well, I, I thought I'd better stick around tonight, Ruthie, and be with Mom and Dad. Oh. Oh, sure. Now, where's my sweater? Oh, uh, there it is. You're sitting on it, kid. Give it a toss, will you? I'm sorry. You came over to say goodbye, Ruthie? That's nice of you. Sorry I'm so busy packing. Well, that's okay, Billy. I like to see you packing. I... I just came over to tell you to... Be careful, Billy. Sure will. Oh, and listen, Ruthie... Yes? I got something serious to tell you. Yes? What is it, Billy? I don't want you getting hitched up to any guy before I come back, you hear? Oh, no, Billy. You know I wouldn't. You promise, Ruth? I... I promise, Billy. Ruthie, dear. Your brown bed is getting 
burning coal. Good Lord, Ruthie, you don't mean you're skipping dessert tonight. What's the matter, see? Ruth, how many chocolate sundaes did you have today? Only one. I'm not sick. I'm just not hungry. Well, that's obvious. I want to do something about the war. What's that? I want to do something useful. I want to help win the war. I can do something. Sure you can, Ruth, in three or four years. Well, but I want to do something now. I definitely do. There must be something, even if I am only four... T- almost 15 years old. Well, don't get too steamed up over it, Ruth. It's no use, Father. My mind is made up. It's absolutely necessary. Okay, okay. Are you starting right away, or am I still taking you to the movies tonight? Well, I can go to the movies tonight, because I'm going to start tomorrow, right after school. Are you Miss Boyle? Yes. The, the hospital superintendent? That's right. Well, uh, I'm Ruth Crawford. Glad to hear it. Uh, I want you to give me a job here at the hospital. Well, well... A regular job. Every day. I can come right after school and, and stay at least three hours. Maybe four. More on weekends. Miss Boyle, I'm serious. I definitely am. You definitely are? How old are you, anyway? For... Fifteen. Fifteen. Well, what do you think you could do around the hospital? Well, I... I thought, you know, like... Like Florence Nightingale. Kind of smooth the patient's brows and... Smooth the patient? That's too much. Well, there must be something I can do. I can wash dishes or make beds or sweep the floors, can't I? Somebody's got to, and... And if you're so short-handed, why can't I? Yes, why can't you? What did you say your name was? Ruth. Ruth Crawford. Come along, Ruth. I'll get you a broom and a damp cloth and an apron. You have? You really have? Well, I don't believe her. You can if you want to, but I definitely think she's made it all up. Ruthie, is it really true? It's really true. I worked there all yesterday afternoon and... And I'm going back today. You can come along and see if you don't believe me. She gave me a little white thing to wear and and everything. Super. A real hospital. Did you see any babies? Sure. Lots of them. But what do you do? I mean, what sort of work do you do? Oh, nursing. I guess you'd call me a kind of nurse's... Well, a kind of nurse, really. But I do all sorts of important things. I'm, I'm not sure if I should tell you, actually. It's... Well, after all, we have our ethics, you know. Get her ethics. Well, it's true. You don't know anything about ethics. Oh, cut it out, Ruthie. Well, just because you don't know anything about how a hospital works. Ruthie, do you think we could get jobs there, too? I mean, do you actually think we could? Mm, Maybe. I'd have to ask Miss Boyle about it. She's the superintendent. Oh, ask her, Ruthie, will you? Will you ask her? All of us, we all want to. I'll see. But I can't promise anything. All right, all right, girls. Now, let's see. Six, eight, nine, eleven, twelve. Twelve of you. For better or for worse. Well, all right. I'll assign you two to a floor. You'll do just as the nurse in charge of your floor tells you. Understood? Oh, sure. Yes, yes. And don't forget, the first one of you steps out of line, does anything wrong, out the whole pack of you go. Oh, we won't. Shh, Marion. Now then, what are your duties again? Well? Uh, fill the water pitchers and make fresh fruit juice drinks. That all? Well, we're supposed to run errands, aren't we? For the nurses, I mean. I'll say you are. What else? Uh, serve food trays and, and wash glasses and dishes. And we're to read to the patients, too. If they want you to. Most of them won't want to see you, is my guess. Well, anyway, there's the children in the children's ward. We're That's supposed... right. You can read to them and keep them happy. 
you'll find that you've got a lot more jobs than those. But they'll do for a starter. Do as you're told. No pranks. No funny business. Understood? Oh, oh yes. Yes. Or out you go, lickety-split. Miss Boyle. Now what is it? Aren't you glad we're here to help? Mm, be about that in three months. If you're still here. We'll be here. Oh, Batlack. She isn't either. I like her. Batlack. Hey, kids, what are we going to do about these things they make us wear? What are they, anyhow? Oh, they're the smocks that the male patients wear. You're supposed to have it on backwards. I think it stinks. They don't even iron them. They're right, Ruth. You know, they actually are. These things have no chick but none. Patsy, chick. <laughs> well, we'll have to get ourselves uniforms. If Miss Boyle... That likes Boyle. If Boyle won't give any to us, we'll have to buy our own. That's it. Super. I'll design them. And we'll have to give ourselves a name. A title, you know. We've got to have a title. It was my idea we work here, so I get to name the title. We'll... We'll be student aides. All in favor. Aye. And we'll cross-stitch our title on our uniform. All in favor. Aye. Ruth Crawford. Hey, Ruth Crawford. To the floor nurse on the fourth floor. Come on, everybody. We're going to work. He didn't. He did so. <laughs> Shh. There's Miss Boyle. Girls, I should think that after three months at the hospital, you know that you're not supposed to stand around giggling in the halls. Sorry, Miss Boyle. It's not as though there isn't plenty of work to do, you know. Yes, ma'am. We're sorry, Miss Boyle. Ruth, there's a new patient in 16 whose eyes are bad. She's got some mail she wants you to read to her. Scoot. On my way, Miss Boyle. Yes? Is that the nurse? No, this is the student aid. The nurse said you had something that you... Why... Why aren't you Mrs. Johnson? That's right. Come in, Lucy. What... I didn't know you were coming to the hospital, Mrs. Johnson. Are your eyes worse? Well, I'm afraid they're no better, dear. Gosh, I'd have come down long ago if I'd have known you were the patient in 16. I mean, after all, living right next door, and, and besides, you're Billy's mother. Why, someday you might... Well, you might be... Billy might... is the reason I asked the nurse to send you in, Ruthie. Oh. Oh. You mean... You mean he's written to you at last? He writes at least once a week and has ever since he left, Ruthie. He does? Gee, I thought maybe he'd been hurt or something. I, I actually did. And I didn't want to ask because, well, I thought it might upset you. Whatever made you think he'd been hurt? Well, well, you see, after all, I've only gotten just one little postcard from him ever since he's been gone. And, and that was a long time ago and just that he'd gotten there all right. And then I didn't hear from him, so... So I thought, well, maybe he couldn't write. No, dear. He... Why, Billy hasn't even seen active combat duty yet, as far as I know. Here's the letter. Let's hear what he has to say. All right. Dearest Mom, gosh, his handwriting is elegant, isn't it? Elegant? Well, it's hard to read, if that's what you mean. Oh, I think it's got distinction. I actually do. Dearest Mom, this will have to be just a short note because I... I've just gotten a two-day leave, and the Turk, I mean the truck, is waiting to take the guys to London right now. The money you sent will help a lot. Maybe Jimmy and I will have a nice evening at the theater. She loves the theater, as you know. She loves the theater? Oh, oh, I see. Not Jimmy. G Jeannie. Excuse me, Mrs. Johnson. Yes. Excuse me, Mrs. Johnson, but who is this genie he's taking to the theater? Oh, why, well, she's just a, a Red Cross girl he happened to meet over there, dear. Go on. Red Cross, eh? Anyway, he says he's going to take her to the theater when he gets to London. Then he says, I figure this is probably the last leave I'll have for a long time. Everybody over here is waiting impatiently for you know what to start. We talk about very little else, and most of our time is spent getting ready for it. I'll write you again, Mom, when I get back from London. I have to close now because I can hear the sergeant tooting the horn of the truck. Say hello to Mom and Dad for me, and to anybody else you know would like to hear from me. All my love, Mom, and I know Jimmy... Er, 
Jeannie joins me in that. She's still talking about what a honey of an engagement ring you picked out for us. Then, then there are a lot of X's for kisses, I guess. Then, then his name. I'm sorry, Ruthie. Maybe I better take the letter. And he's got a postscript. He says, "How's that little kid next door? Still carrying the torch for me? Say hello to her for me too. That's all." Oh. Ruthie, Ruthie dear, listen, Ruth. Say, Ruth, come here a second. What's the matter? N- nothing, nothing, Miss Boyle. I'm okay. You're crushed. What did that woman in 16 do to you, anyhow? Nothing. Why don't you leave me alone? Well, what do you make of that? Come in. Ruthie? I'm sorry, Mrs. Johnson, if the student aide did anything Ruthie. that I... No, I know Ruth very well. It was my fault. It's just that I shouldn't have asked her to read this letter from my son. You see, he's gotten engaged to an old sweetheart of his over in England... And Ruthie thought... Oh, I see. If you could do anything. I think I know how to take care of her. You are listening to Virginia Widler as Ruthie Crawford and Jane Darwell as Nurse Boyle in Junior Angel on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As our play continues, Ruthie has discovered that being a student aide in a hospital in an effort to contribute her bit to the war effort can mean interesting work, but also personal heartache. And Nurse Boyle's experience is the factor best calculated to help Ruthie in her trouble. Oh, Ruthie... Really, Miss Boyle, I'm all right. Oh, nonsense. I'm not worrying about you. There's too much else to worry about. Now, there's a very sick patient down the public ward, and it's getting on towards supper time. And I don't know where your friend Jean has disappeared to, and every bell is ringing at once. I just don't know what to do first. I suppose that woman in the ward... Oh, I can take care of her, Miss Boyle. Please, can I? I can find out what she needs and and get it and... I don't know. She's really pretty sick. Oh, I can take care of her, Miss Boyle. You go take care of the suppers. Well, all right. It's the woman in the bed at the right as you go into the ward. Right away, Miss Boyle. Uh, excuse me. Is there anything I can do for you? Nurse? No, no, this isn't the nurse. But I can do almost everything a nurse can for you. Your, <gasps> your fight uniform... I thought... I, I'm a student aide on this floor. Can I... Can I freshen your pillow or... Or get you a cold drink? No. No, thank you. Wouldn't... Wouldn't you like a nice glass of... Of orange juice? No. There's nothing, thanks. Nothing. You... You have a Bible here. Would you like me to read it to you? Oh. Would you, child? Would you do that? Sure. Is, is there any... Any special thing you... You'd like to? No. No. Just anywhere. Oh, oh. anywhere. I'll just open it and... Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. He may abide with you forever. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world sees me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Abide in me, and I in you. 
And now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Thank you, child. Do, do you feel any better? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, thank you. It helped me a lot. It's funny, but I think it helped me, too. Are you busy, Miss Boyle? I'd like to talk to you if you're not busy. I mean, I actually would. What's on your mind, Ruth? Well, Miss Boyle, I'm going to be a nurse all the rest of my life. I definitely am. Miss Boyle, I've decided I'm not going out with boys anymore. I'm not going to go to movies or, or go dancing or anything. Not not listen to bands on the radio or, or anything. Now, wait a minute, Ruthie. I know it's best this way, Miss Boyle. I know it's good for me. I've decided definitely... I'm going to devote my life to nursing. Well. Isn't it wonderful? Ruth, you've got a lot of time to make a decision like that. You're talking about a whole lifetime. And a lifetime, Ruth, can be a very, very long time. Ask me, I know. Don't you like being a nurse, Miss Boyle? Me? Well, right now I've been working for, let's see, 20 straight hours. Well, maybe you shouldn't ask me such a question. Why, yes. Yes, I like being a nurse, Ruthie. I wouldn't be anything else. But as for you, wait a while. I know. But I think well. not yet. You've got a lot of roads to go down, a lot of things to do, a lot of words to hear before you make your decision. And after all that, if you still want to be a nurse, well, then you'll be a good nurse, I guess. You've got the makings, I'll say that. You mean it, Miss Boyle? You definitely do? I definitely do. Oh, thanks, Miss Boyle. Thanks. Ruthie, there she is. Come on, Ruth. We're going home. It's after six. Why, so it is. I had no idea how the time... I've been so busy with my patient. Hey, Ruth, listen, you forgot... Claire's got a surprise. It's her birthday. Happy birthday, Claire. And now I've got to go nurse my sick patient. But Ruthie... Ruthie, listen. Claire's father's going to take us all into town tonight to dance. Tommy Dorsey. Uh, dance? And I've got a date for you. He's super. A man? No. I think I'll... Ruthie! What's the matter? Aren't you feeling good? I told you my decision, Jean. I'm not going to have anything more to do with men. I'm going to be a nurse all my life. Like, like Florence Nightingale. It's, it's more holy. Ruthie. But Ruth, the date I've got for you is a lieutenant in the Marines. In the Marines? And we're going to hear Tommy Dorsey, Ruthie. Tommy Dorsey. Is he engaged? Oh, Tommy Dorsey? The lieutenant in the Marines. Him? Oh, no, Ruthie, he's just my cousin. That's the only reason he's coming with us at all. Mom made him come. We can stay till midnight, Ruthie. Well... Uh, where do I meet you? I don't suppose just going dancing once with a man would mean anything, would it? I mean, actually, it wouldn't. Thank you, Virginia Weidler and Jane Darwell. In just a few moments, our stars will return to the microphone with Miss Margaret Collette, who is actually engaged in the work that Ruthie Crawford began in our play. And now Clayton Collier, speaking for DuPont, tells us of one of the ways DuPont cellophane is helping in the important job of food conservation. We waste 15% of the food in our kitchen. It's a shocking fact. We, the people of the United States, waste 15% of all the food we take into our homes. The government asks all of us to help reduce this appalling waste, which has a direct bearing on the health and efficiency of our fighting forces. Where can you watch out for waste? Right in your own kitchen. Millions of Americans tomorrow morning will toast slices of bread as part of their breakfast. They'll go to the bread box or the kitchen cabinet and take out a loaf of bread they bought today, or perhaps the last slices of a loaf several days old. The bread will be either fresh or stale. If it's fresh, it'll be eaten. If it's stale, it will be wasted. Well, you say, what are two slices of bread? Only two slices. Two slices of bread wasted once a week in each home 
equal three million wasted loaves of bread. Three million loaves of bread will feed a lot of soldiers and sailors. The condition of those two slices of bread in your home determine whether they will be eaten or wasted. And their condition depends on two things. The way the bread is packaged and the way you take care of the package. Your baker is doing his part. Many bakers safeguard bread against mold with DuPont Microban mold and rope inhibitor. In addition, the baking industry is packaging bread and other bakery products in materials that give a high degree of protection. It is up to you to preserve these packages so that they will continue to do their job in your home. In the war against food waste, one of DuPont's products is playing a noteworthy part. This is transparent, moisture-proof cellophane used as a packaging material to protect not only bread, but foods of many other types. Helping to conserve those last two slices of your loaf of bread, bread good to the last slice, is one of the ways that DuPont cellophane is helping. Using up these two slices of bread in your home, an example of the difference between waste and conservation is one way you personally can help to win the war. By putting every morsel of food to work, you do your part. This reminder is brought to you by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. And now here are Jane Darwell and Virginia Weidler with their guest tonight, Miss Margaret Collette, a teenage hospital aide. Thank you, everyone. Standing here at the microphone with Virginia Weidler and me is Margaret Collette, one of the many high school girls doing so much these days to help out in our overcrowded hospitals. Inasmuch as Virginia was the junior angel of our play tonight, I think she ought to ask our real-life junior angel about her work. Thank you, Miss Darwell. Tell me, Margaret, is it awfully hard work you have to do? No, I don't think it's hard. I think it's very interesting. Well, tell us why, will you? In the first place, you get to meet a lot of interesting people. You mean soldiers and things? Well, sometimes we do. But mostly it's people in your own town that maybe you've seen around for years. And then suddenly, instead of being just a, a well, a face, there's somebody that you know and like a lot. How about the nurses? Do you like working with them? Oh, yes, they're wonderful. And they know everything. And they're so nice to you. Do you really have the feeling that what you do is important and... And that you're helping in the war? Yes. And the nurses in the hospital people are always asking us if we can get more girls for them. So if any of you girls who are listening in tonight really want to contribute part of your time to this patriotic effort, won't you go to your local hospital and see what you can do to help? Thank you. Thank you, Margaret, and good night. Our thanks to Virginia Weidler and Jane Darwell for helping us to bring the story of this important contribution by the thousands of schoolgirls who are doing such helpful work in the nation's hospitals. Next week, DuPont presents Brian Donlevy in Odyssey to Freedom, one of the most remarkable and engrossing stories of adventure and pursuit that has yet come out of this war. It's about an American who, among other things, escaped twice from German concentration camps. A man whose courage and resolve and love of freedom were so strong that he was able to surmount almost unbelievable obstacles. We invite you to join the DuPont Cavalcade audience again next Monday evening when the popular Hollywood star, Brian Donlevy, will be heard in Odyssey to Freedom. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade Orchestra was under the direction of Donald Voorhees. This is Roland Winters sending best wishes from Cavalcade sponsor, the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is the National Broadcasting Company.